Welcome to Windsor Lock Generator, located in Windsor Lock, Connecticut. Our mission is being an industry leader in health, safety, and environmental practices. We believe excellence in health, safety, and environmental practices is vital to the well-being of the staff, contractor, and our community. We are a gas-fired combined cycle plant. We use two gas combustion turbines and a steam turbine. Combined cycle means that fuel, in this case natural gas, is utilized in the gas turbines to produce electricity from the gas turbine generators. The heat of the turbine exhaust is used in the heat recovery steam generator to create steam for the steam turbine to produce additional electricity and steam for our host. The plant has the capability to produce 70 megawatts of electricity. That's enough to supply approximately 7,000 households. This is a large and complex facility that converts natural gas in a safe and efficient manner into useful electricity and steam energy. However, the presence of high voltage electricity, chemicals, high pressure steam, high temperatures, and other potential hazards requires that everyone working on site considers the safety of themselves and their co-workers their number one priority. Now let's take a tour of the facility, paying particular attention to safety issues, location of safety equipment, and signs. Throughout the facility there are fire alarms, fire hydrants, fire extinguishers, fire suppression systems, emergency showers, and eyewash stations. Locate these near your work area prior to beginning work. This is the main gate of our host. Proceed slowly at 5 miles per hour. This is strictly enforced along Canal Road. To our right is a pedestrian bridge. This bridge serves as our evacuation point. Now we're at the plant gate. Seatbelts must be used at all times. Windsor Lock Generating reserves the right to search all vehicles entering or leaving the plant as well as any personal items. The use of photographic equipment, including cellular phones with camera capability, must be authorized in advance by Windsor Lock Generating Manager. This facility has 24-hour recorded video security. Park along the canal side of the road. No parking by any building. Following the road to our left is a water treatment building. Chemicals stored here are a tank of caustic and tank of sulfuric acid. To our right is a water intake and traveling screen. When working near water edge, you must wear a life vest. This is the administration building. Here is the main entrance. Located on the second floor are the offices, water lab, and control room. We will go over the importance of the control room later on in the video. You must sign in at the second floor administration building. Next to the administration buildings is the turbine building with a GE gas turbine and a GE steam turbine. An HRSG, also a Caterpillar Solar Titan gas turbine. There is a continuous emissions monitor shelter where calibration gases are used. This is the main entrance shop. Also located here are two auxiliary boiler and steam water feed pump. At the end of the building is a high voltage switch gear room. Only authorized personnel are allowed to enter. Off the switch gear room is a batteries room. The batteries contain sulfuric acid. Only authorized personnel may enter the battery room. Please note that no conductive materials are allowed in the battery room. Outside is a high voltage switch yard and large transformer. These are high voltage areas and only authorized personnel are allowed to enter. This is a 7,000 gallon tank of anhydrous ammonia and delivery area. When deliveries are in process, personnel on site are not allowed to cross the barrier. Outside of the water treatment building is a gas intake area and gas compressor room. Absolutely no smoking around this area. Behind the gas intake area is a 7,200 gallon tank of caustic and a 7,200 gallon tank of sulfuric acid. Again, when deliveries are in progress, personnel on site are not allowed to cross the barrier. Next is a 180,000 gallon tank of water, two 180,000 gallon diesel fuel tanks, and a demon water tank. Again, absolutely no smoking around this area. This is the control room. It serves as the plant's emergency operations center and is staffed 24 hours a day. Entry into a control room is prohibited except when required in the course of conducting approved business, work, or in the case of an emergency. When your presence is required in a control room, stand well clear of all panels. It is positively forbidden to touch control equipment, including acceptance and silencing of alarms. The control room is the place to get a tailgate form before any work is begun. The control room operator will issue you or your group work leader a tailgate form before any work commences at the plant. SDSs and environmental health and safety procedures are available for your review in the control room.
Only personnel authorized by the control room operator can operate plant equipment. Operations personnel will be made available to secure and operate equipment for you. The control room operator has full responsibility for all work occurring in this facility. This facility values effective communication. We encourage you to think of communication as a three-part process. State, repeat back, and confirm. Remember, miscommunication can destroy equipment and kill people. Familiarize yourself with the phonetic alphabet. A equals alpha, B equals bravo, C equals Charlie, and D equals delta, etc. Remember, any communication system, including gatronics, telephones, and in-plant radios, can be used to report emergencies to the control room. Windsor Lock Generating is equipped with a Gatronics plant phone paging system, which has stations throughout the plant. To use any station, choose a channel, depress the button in the handset, and announce the person you want and the channel you're on. Then release the button and wait for a response. Windsor Lock Generating employees use two-way radios for communication. A Windsor Lock Generating employee may be assigned to your work location, or you'll be provided with a radio when working on site. Channel 1 on the radio has been designated as the main channel to be used. In the event of an emergency, contact the control room immediately. Use a two-way radio, Gatronics, and telephone if available. Accurately state the nature of the emergency, fire, injury, or spill. State your exact location. For this reason, it is essential that you know your exact location and can state it in terms that will be readily understood by Windsor Lock Generating personnel. Take appropriate emergency actions if you're trained to do so, and only if it does not endanger your life or health. Otherwise, notify and retreat to a safe area. If you are trained in their use, it is essential that you know the location of emergency equipment, such as first aid kits, spill kits, and fire extinguishers. You may test emergency showers and eyewash stations near your work area before you start your job. An automated external defibrillator is located near the main entrance. All types of emergencies need to be reported to the control room. These include weather emergencies, medical emergencies, fire, bomb threats, chemical release, operational and environmental emergencies. Even if there is a near miss, it must be reported to your group work leader and to the control room immediately. A copy of the contractor's accident report must be provided to the safety department no later than 24 hours after the accident or near miss has occurred. In the event of a plant-wide emergency, you'll be notified by Gatronic system or plant-wide audible alarm. When you hear the announcement or the alarm, proceed immediately to the evacuation point. If you're driving a vehicle, turn the vehicle off and walk to the instructed point. Even if your area is not affected, you must meet at the evacuation point for a head count. The evacuation point is located on the pedestrian bridge. Contractors are required to provide their employees with the acceptable training identified in all federal and state regulations that apply to the activities their personnel will perform on site at the plant. Training topics include, but are not limited to, hazardous material and waste handling, powered industrial trucks, lockout tagout, scaffolding, hot work, fall protection, respiratory protection, electrical safety, and confined space entry. Before you personally begin work, you'll be required to sign an acknowledgement form stating that you have reviewed this video and understand plant safety, environmental, and security policies. This acknowledgement is good for the calendar year you receive the training. Throughout this video, you'll hear reference to your PIC, person in charge. Who is Windsor Lock generating PIC? Generally, it is the person you're working for or his designee. Your PIC can answer any question that might arise about procedures, equipment, or policies. Your PIC will supply you with the name of a backup person for the times when they may not be available. No one is permitted to have unescorted access to the facility until they have completed contractor safety training. Contractors will be shown all areas designated for their access and routes of travel they might use during their project. Contractors are responsible for ensuring their employees know and stay in specified work areas. Any contract employee found in an area which is not a designated access area will be removed from the property and not allowed to return until the infraction is reviewed by the contract company owner in Windsor Lock Generating Management. You are required to adhere to all federal, state, local, and control room requirements or you will risk losing your ability to bid for work at this or any other company facility. If you come across any safety violation, 
It is your responsibility to make your supervisor or any Windsor Lock generating employee aware of your concern. We are continually striving for a safer workplace. All Windsor Lock generating personnel and contractors have the authority to stop work that is being conducted in an unsafe manner. The plant safety regulations are based on industry standards and safe work practices are strictly enforced. Horseplay, including riding as a passenger on a forklift or other equipment, will not be tolerated. Fire extinguishers are only to be used for fighting fires. Report any use of a fire extinguisher to your pick. Signs and tags are among the most important safety measures in this facility. Observe all warning signs, signals, and notices. Several types of tags are used for everything from tracking discrepancies to protecting someone's life. Never remove any tag. A danger sign indicates an imminent hazardous situation, which if not avoided will result in death or serious injury. A warning sign indicates a potentially hazardous situation, which if not avoided could result in death or serious injury. A caution sign indicates a potentially hazardous situation, which if not avoided may result in minor or moderate injury. It may also be used to alert against unsafe practices. Yellow caution barrier tape means you should go around this area. If that is not possible, and if there are workers in this area, seek permission to pass through the barricaded area. Then pass through the area, but do so with caution. Red barrier tape means danger. You cannot pass through the area without authorization from the control room operator. Windsor Lock generating speed limit is 5 miles per hour. The kitchen and break room are for plant personnel only. Eating and drinking are restricted in some areas. Weapons and firearms are not allowed on site. This facility strictly prohibits the possession of drugs, alcoholic beverages, or their empty containers. Lockers, coolers, toolboxes, and vehicles are subject to random search. Please note that the improper use of prescription or over-the-counter drugs is a serious concern. Some medications, even when used properly, have side effects that can impair an individual's ability to perform. In those cases, the individual must report the possible effects of the medication to their group work leader. All equipment brought into this facility must meet all current safety standards. Windsor Lock Generating reserves the right to inspect and reject any contractor's equipment. Check all tools and equipment prior to use. All guards must be in place. Any necessary repairs must be made immediately. If the ground is missing on any electrical tools or equipment, the equipment cannot be put into service until a repair or replacement has been made. Ground fault circuit interrupter must be used with all portable power equipment. Welding cables and extension cords must be run overhead any walkway or alleyway to prevent tripping hazards. Contractor employees shall not operate equipment belonging to this facility, including trucks, cranes, powered industrial fork trucks, etc., unless authorized to do so. Compressed gas cylinders are to be stored in secure areas with the regulators off and the caps on and secured. Cylinders must not be left freestanding. And a metal fire barrier must be used on oxyacetylene carts. All gas cylinders must be in an upright position, chained or tied to prevent falling and shut off when not in use. All overhead work must be either barricaded below, flagged with red danger tape, or have a designated person on watch. When using a crane or lift, the area must be barriered off. You must use red tape, chain, and signage as necessary. After the hazard is removed, the barriers must be promptly taken down. Only fiberglass ladders can be used on this site. Always inspect the ladder before use. Tie off all extension ladders prior to use. Where jobs require scaffolding, rigging, or ladders, compliance with OSHA standards is mandatory. Scaffolds must have a tag attached indicating that it is ready for use. All scaffolding must be inspected daily. Scaffolding that has a red danger tag cannot be used. Scaffolding with a yellow tag can be used, but personnel on the scaffolding must use a full body harness with fall protection. Green tag scaffolding has been inspected and is ready for use. Scaffolding can be altered by qualified personnel only. During scaffolding construction and when the scaffolding tag requires it, fall protection must be utilized. No product containing asbestos will be allowed on site. Specific personal protective equipment, PPE, is required for anyone working within this facility. The contractor you're working for shall be required to provide all necessary PPE and any training necessary for the use of that PPE. 
All personal protective equipment must be ANSI approved, rated for the particular hazard, and maintained as per the manufacturer's instructions. This equipment must be worn in all areas where it is required. Compliance with personal protective equipment regulations is mandatory. Offenders will be escorted from the site. A non-metallic hard hat meeting ANSI Z89.1 Class B standard must be worn throughout Windsor Lock Generating with the exception of the laboratory, control room, and administration building. All long hair must be tied back. Hard hats should be worn with the sides parallel to the ground and the build of the front. They are not to have items stored between the shell and suspension and are to be in good physical condition. Hard hats must not have holes, cracks, or other flaws. Safety glasses with permanently affixed shields must be worn at all times. Approved hearing protection is required in high noise areas as posted. Suitable ANSI Z41-1991 approved safety shoes with hard soles must be worn in all areas. Sneakers and other street shoes are not allowed. Suitable work gloves are required when they will help to prevent hand injuries. Shirt with sleeves and full length pants are required. Shirts must be tucked in. Clothing with nylon or synthetic blends are not allowed. Long sleeves rolled down and a face shield are required when cutting, grinding, or welding. Proper personal protection equipment must be worn when working with chemicals as called for on the safety data sheet common to that product. Approved life vest is required when working near water's edge. When switching, operator must wear the proper PPE. Fall protection with full body harness is required whenever working four feet above any floor or in an elevated area that is not protected by a guardrail that is at least 42 inches high. If respiratory equipment is required, it will be provided by the contractor you work for. The contractor will provide all required training and medical examinations. Before any job is started at the plant, you must get a tailgate form from the control room. The tailgate form will identify the job location, the type of work being done, and what safety precautions will be taken by the contractor. A pre-job tailgate briefing will be held each day before every job is started. This briefing will be conducted by the person in charge and will cover such subjects as work procedures, special precautions, hazards associated with the job, energy source controls, personal protective equipment and clothing, general housekeeping, and environmental concerns and considerations. Special safety permits are required before undertaking certain tasks including lockout, tagout, hot work, and any work in a confined space. Each of these permits contains special safety regulations that must be adhered to at all times. Permit forms and additional information is available from your PIC. A critical safety precaution at this facility is lockout tagout. This system is designed to protect workers from harm caused by stored energy or by accidental startup of equipment that is being worked on. If you're working on equipment which requires lockout tagout, your PIC will arrange to have all lockout tagout performed for you. The control room operator is allowed to make the requirements more stringent but may never make them less stringent. You, as a requester, can also request more stringent lockout tagout requirements. Equipment that is under lockout tagout will be affixed with a lock and tag. The dangers, do not operate tag, must be affixed to all devices, switches, valves, levers, etc. That isolates each source of energy including steam, electric, hydraulic, mechanical, and pneumatic. In most instances, a lock will be placed as well. A designated plant operator will perform all isolations. Any device bearing a danger do not operate tag shall not be operated at any time. Operating any equipment which is tagged danger do not operate will result in disciplinary action including immediate dismissal and possible exclusion from any further work at this or any other company facility. You are required to visually verify that the lockout is in place at the start of each day. Lockout tagout will not be cleared until the contractor and control room operator releases the equipment back to the plant. Contractors must notify their pick when work is complete or when leaving Windsor Lock Generating Site. Never work on any system once you or your supervisor has cleared off of the lockout tagout. Even if it's minutes later, you are no longer authorized to work on the system. Work without a lockout tagout is grounds for removal from the site. Please note, any work involving the impairment of the fire protection system must be cleared through the control room operator.
prior to hot work, which includes welding, cutting, burning, heating, or any work involving open flame, the contractor will notify their pick and get a hot work permit. The control room operator and operations personnel will identify the job location, the type of work being done, and what safety precautions the personnel must take. When cutting or grinding any type of material, a face shield shall be worn. In the event that a small workspace restricts the use of a face shield, then goggles shall be worn. Anytime welding is done near another worker, contractors are responsible for supplying adequate shields and curtains to protect passers-by. If hot work is being performed near flammable material, the contractor will be required to supply a fire watch. This fire watch must be posted during all activities and also for up to a 60-minute post-work period. When using a torch, a backflow arrestor must be installed. When welding chrome or stainless steel, the contractor must have a hexavalent chrome program in place. Working in a confined space requires certain precautionary measures to control hazards. At Windsor Lock Generating, a confined space is defined as any space that meets the following criteria. One, is large enough and so configured that an employee or contractor can bodily enter and perform assigned work, and two, has limited or restricted means for entry or exit, and three, is not designated for continuous employee or contractor occupancy. All confined spaces at Windsor Lock Generating are clearly marked with signs. In order to enter a confined space, your pick must be notified. The requirements to enter the space will be determined and will be noted on the confined space entry permit. Only those trained in confined space entry will be allowed to enter the confined space. The control room operator will complete the permit and will refer to procedures for the list of confined spaces and the requirement of those spaces. All of the confined spaces at Windsor Lock Generating are designated in the confined space procedure. Prior to entry, atmospheric testing must be performed and there may be no hazardous atmosphere within the space whenever an employee or contractor is inside the space. Prior to initial entry and any re-entry after a confined space has been closed for a period of time, it must be tested to determine that not less than 19.5%, no more than 23.5% oxygen by volume is present. The concentration of air contaminants in the confined space must be not more than the acceptable permissible exposure limit for toxic contaminants and not more than 10% of the lower explosive limit. The confined space permit will be posted at the entrance to the space. Unattended entrances to confined spaces shall have guards with barriers and a warning side. This facility uses a number of chemicals that are considered hazardous. Among them are caustic soda, sulfuric acid, anhydrous ammonia, and natural gas. In addition, contractors may need to use hazardous materials in the course of their work. Caustic soda, sulfuric acid, and hydrous ammonia are contact hazards that can burn the eyes and skin. They can also react violently and release chlorine gas or acid vapors if mixed with each other. Natural gas is a fire and explosion hazard. If there are any signs of a major release of these gases, extinguish all flames, remove any source of ignition, notify, and leave the area. Windsor Lock Generating has adopted OSHA Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. The GHS includes criteria for the classification of health, physical, and environmental hazards, as well as specifying what information should be included on labels of hazardous materials as well as safety data sheets. Windsor Lock Generating also uses the NFPA and HMIS labeling systems are used throughout the plant. The NFPA diamond is divided into four sections. Blue, indicating the degree of a health hazard. Red, indicating the degree of a fire hazard. Yellow, indicating the degree of a reactivity hazard. White, indicating any additional information. Each diamond, except the white one, has a number between 0 and 4 that indicates the degree of the hazard, with 0 indicating no hazard and 4 indicating a severe hazard. All contractors who intend to use materials or generate any wastes must receive authorization from the PIC prior to initiating these activities. Contractors must provide a safety data sheet for each material that they will be using on site. Contractors are responsible for the proper handling and storage of hazardous materials. Never dump oil, solvent, or chemicals down any drains. Always check with your group work leader or Windsor Lock Generating contact for waste management procedures. Personnel will follow all personal protective equipment instructions on all pertinent SDS sheets when performing any task. 
Upon completion of the work, all unused chemicals and products must be removed from Windsor Lock generating property and disposed of properly, according to all regulations. Unmonitored or uncontrolled release of chemicals to the ground, water, or the atmosphere are to be avoided. Use good work practices to avoid releases and immediately report any release of chemicals to the control room. Any initial breach of any hazard chemical system requires full PPE to be worn in accordance with the SDS or if you are not trained or PPE is not available, evacuate the area. If working with oils, solvents, or chemicals, prepare in advance for a spill. Have absorbent pads available. These can be obtained from Windsor Lock Generating Operators in advance. If a spill occurs, contain it if it is safe to do so and notify the control room immediately. Before using radioactive materials or x-rays, notify your pick for the proper approval. Follow safe work procedures. Each radiation area shall be conspicuously posted with a sign or signs bearing the radiation caution symbol. Caution signs, labels, barricade tape, or rope and signals shall use the conventional radiation caution colors, magenta or purple on yellow background. Gatronic announcements should be made prior to each x-ray. Good housekeeping must be maintained in all buildings, yards, premises, and mobile equipment. Work areas are to be kept as free as possible of excessive equipment or supplies. Walkways, aisles, and stairways shall be kept clear. No obstructions are to be placed in the vicinity of electrical panels or safety equipment, such as emergency showers, eye wash stations, fire extinguishers, and so forth. Tools, equipment, scraps, and refuse must be removed from work areas in a timely manner. Oily rags are considered hazardous and shall be stored and disposed of promptly and properly. Nails or other fasteners shall never be left projecting from boards or walls where they may cause injury. When removing materials from packaging cases or when removing items such as concrete forms, all projecting nails must be removed. Tools when not being used shall be kept in chests or convenient racks or otherwise stored where they will not create a hazard. All garbage, scrap, rags, nuts, and bolts or other debris generated by your work or presence is to be properly disposed of. A final reminder, it is your responsibility to follow all local, state, and federal health safety and environmental regulations, as well as site regulations. Failure to do so could result in your removal from the facility and the possibility of prosecution. We welcome you to Windsor Lock Generating. We want your work here to be safe and productive. If you have any questions, need additional information, or are unsure about any of the safety rules, please ask now. Remember, your safety is everyone's top priority at Windsor Lock Generator.